Hello and welcome back to Robbie's Arcade. Today we want to talk about Sonic the Hedgehog 1. I know this game is insanely old now and it is an, a classic. A number of us out there even played it in our lifetime. It isn't like when you hear people talking about playing Pac-Man and stuff like that and you have kind of blurry visions of the past. Sonic the Hedgehog, like Super Mario, is one of these hugely iconic characters that has persisted all the way through the last 25 plus years. It's one of those iconic characters that the Sega license has never really got rid of. Don't get me wrong, over the past 10 years especially, we've seen Sonic um, be on platforms that we never thought possible. I mean, the likes of Xbox and PC, mm, fair enough, but when we saw Sonic on a Nintendo in that Olympics game, what the hell? It was like all of us felt betrayed, but we're not gonna talk about my teenage angst. Today we're gonna talk about Sonic the Hedgehog 1 on the Master System against the Mega Drive or Sega Genesis based on where you lived. Now, both versions of this game were released around about the same time. Across all the countries in the world, between 1991 and 1992, Sonic 1 was released. And it was released on not just these two platforms, but also on the Game Gear. We've got a versus between the Master System and the Game Gear version. I believe that's already out there for you guys. And with that, we thought we were kind of pushing the, the envelope there and sort of bursting the bubble for a number of you out there that thought the Game Gear and the Master System version were just the same game, but they really weren't. Of course, the Master System on the 8-bit version and the Mega Drive on the 16-bit version have huge differences, but both of them are exceedingly playable games. I've played them both um, a number of years ago and since, and of course, Sonic Hedgehog 1 on the Mega Drive has been released, re-released, re-released, remade, remastered, remade, available to you, the public, many, many times over. But I've been talking for long enough. Let's have a look at the intro for these games. First, let's take a look at the Master System version. Okay, so this is what you got when you booted the game up. Not bad. We got a waggly finger. That was the intro you got when you boot up the game. And we go into level one. Now this blue bar we see on the side of the screen there, on that side, um, that persists the whole time. I never understood as a kid why it was there, but it isn't just the emulation of this. And look at Sonic leaving the title screen there going so fast. That was a glitch that a number of people could take advantage of in this game. So we've got the jumping platforms, fewer enemies, it should be said. We've got the invincibility there, but that first level completed insanely fast. And you've got the extra life there. And at the end of the level, of course, we had the score tally. And again, not hugely dissimilar to Sonic we know. We will look at the Mega Drive version in just a second, but... Not a bad little rendition. Now I've got to say, I don't think it's too bit uh, too bit bitty, and the graphics aren't too bad, and even the music isn't too bad either. But if we look at the Mega Drive version, the Mega Drive version, if, you, if you've never played Sonic on the Mega Drive, it's going to be very hard these days for you to feel the power of this opening. But those that do remember the game, strap yourself in. Oh God, that feels good. This must have been an intro that's watched so many times. How many of you have played this level over and over? I'm talking to you, Chris. So straight away, hugely more colorful. The 16-bit system gives you so much more. The music's deeper, there's far more enemies. It's invincibility there straight away. I see what I mean, hugely large numbers of enemies by comparison. And we'll talk about some of the trivia and main differences between these two games later on. We do have some trivia to discuss later. But straight away, the game just seems more in your face. It may not seem as fast when the other characters leave on the screen, but we will have both of these games running side by side later on. There we go, once you pass 100 rings, lovely free life there. And there you go, and then of course you've got the bonus stage. And do you know what, let's look at that bonus stage, because that's going to be worth a look, that's quite important. So, yeah, this guy got a life as well, nice. So once you collect, I believe it's over 50 or 100 rings, you're in this bonus stage, this bizarre, strange world here. The ultimate goal of the bonus stage was to collect the Chaos Emerald. You had to collect all the Chaos Emeralds to completely succeed in... Fr there you go, and you collected the ring, and that was the end of the, ca of the bonus stage. And there you go. One Chaos Emerald. Boom. Done. And that was the end of the level, so we'll end that there. So straight away, as you can see, the two levels do differ 
uh, hugely in terms of graphics. We'll play them both side by side in just a moment. But ultimately, the music is far more preferable, in my opinion, on the Mega Drive version, as you would expect from a superior machine. But the Mega uh, the Master System was really still pushing the envelope with this game. I remember getting it at the time. And a few of my friends that had the Mega Drive, rich parents, um, they, when they had the Mega Drive version, obviously I was jealous. It was the superior game. But the Master System did more than an admirable job, and it's something I think I can only really appreciate looking back. Let's get these two games playing side by side, shall we? You're going to have to forgive the music mashup that you're about to hear. The Master System hasn't even booted yet. So straight away. So look at the check pattern, for example. It's much smaller on the Master System version. The spikes seem completely um, differently sized. Even the enemies, the, the scale of the enemies against Sonic's own uh, character there, hugely different. And obviously Sonic in the right screen has collected those speed boots. That's why he seems to be going insanely fast. Um, and there you go on the left screen there with the Master System. You are seeing the Chaos Emeralds are collected mid-level. We will talk about that later on in the trivia. But the game itself was far more reliant on the enjoyment of speed in the Mega Drive version. Oh, and did he get, in the, did he get the bonus stage? Yes, he got it. Now obviously the bonus stage on the Master System differs greatly, not only because you're not doing the bonus stage to get hold of that Chaos Emerald, something you collect mid-game, you get nothing for the Robotnik logo, it should be said. You'll have to forgive, once again, the bizarre music mashup that you're catching right now. Um, and what we will look at in a bit is the two bosses side by side, because um, they do differ greatly. So hopefully this person will collect that Chaos Emerald and we can get these two lined up. Because what we get here, if you see on the screen, in the Master System, we get the little Robotnik logo just to denote that we are on the boss level. Whereas the Mega Drive was far more in your face about it. Everyone knows, if you don't know the boss to the first um, Sonic the Hedgehog game, then you missed out. Now one of the big differences you will notice straight away between these two bosses is that in the Mega Drive version, do you know what, let's pause that because we want to see these bosses side by side. In the Mega Drive version, you get to collect rings for the boss. You get to use, you know, you can, you've got that extra chance. Whereas in the Master System version, you don't get the opportunity to uh, collect rings. Uh, go, if you take a hit, that's it. So every single boss were, had to be a flawless victory on the Master System. Whereas on the Mega Drive, you had the opportunity to have countless rings. And that's not all. We will talk about the business of rings later on in the um, Master System version. Because that's one of the other glaring differences that I never quite understood in Sonic the Hedgehog for the Master System. Uh, but here we go, we're hopefully gonna get that lined up, and I believe we're getting close to the boss now. So many lives the Mega Drive character here has collected. And here we are, we're in the boss. Let's get them lined up side by side. So obviously, the music differs greatly. We will talk about Sonic music later on. Then the Master System, no big boulder, unfortunately. Now this guy made mincemeat of it because he managed to get hold of that invincibility. Whereas in the Master System, you're forced to do this silly jumping, jumping, jumping to try and get to it. The music was preferable, it should be said, on the Mega Drive. Of course it's going to be when you've got that kind of hardware to rely on. Um, let's pause that Mega Drive game, shall we, so we can make sure we get these two linked up. Now. Here we go, are we going to defeat this boss? There you go. they done well with the music, it has to be said, but of course, the end of the level, not much different, fewer explosions, but you still get all of the, uh, the loads of animals jumping out the thing at the end there. So there we go, we passed Act 3, both characters have got one Chaos Emerald each, nice to hear it. And let's see what Level 2 has got in store for these two. Now on the Smart System it's just called Bridge, whereas on the Mega Drive it's the Marble Zone. This is the lava base level. So there is a huge difference straight away in terms of what the levels are like. They've gone for a completely different level design. Once again, do check out the trivia later in the video where we talk about the main differences between these two games in terms of development in the end. Because not only because obviously the Master System had less hardware to deal with to get everything done, but on top of that, the Master System version had to deal with, it couldn't even consider having levels like the Marble Zone because it didn't have the sprites 
and the scale of RAM to deal with the sheer scope of some of these levels. The lava, the multi-tiers, you may notice the majority of Master System levels, another emerald there, the majority of Master System levels are um, very one level. They don't really move up and down, whereas the Mega Drive levels had far more scope for both horizontal and vertical movement. Um, but you know what? While we haven't even completed the level on the other one there. But let's give that a pause right now. We will flip to another boss later on. Oh, and actually, yes, let's look at this bonus stage. Now, this is the bonus stage for the Master System version. Now, in the Master System, you have one minute to try and collect as many rings as possible. Spelling out the word Sega there, lovely touch. And you could obviously collect more time as you went as well as a power-up. Um, don't much care for the music. But then again, I wasn't a huge fan of the music of... Ooh, well, that seemed like a waste of seven seconds, but okay. Um, the Master System bo bonus stage, I don't really like the music, but the Mega Drive music is so slow-paced, I think I prefer this music anyway. This guy's being insanely thorough about rings. I don't know how I feel about that. But he went for the 100 rings for the life, and there we go, he's entered the level there. So we'll give that a pause in a second, and we will talk trivia. Now... These two games, once again, were released at pretty much the same time, but Sonic the Hedgehog was always going to be a flagship icon character for Sega. If you do check out Guru Larry, Larry's cha channel, you will find that uh, Sonic the Hedgehog's image was actually plagiarised in a game that was released a short while prior to this, where it was used as a walking walk-along enemy. But we completely ignore the fact that, that, that this is really the first true Sonic game. Um, now the games itself, even though they were released at the same time, obviously development and hardware concerns led to a large array of differences. Um, largely one of the first ones being to do with checkpoint systems. Now both of them have got little boxes that you can jump on as a checkpoint. Um, but, uh, I say they've both got little boxes, they've actually got a completely different system entirely. The, the Mega Drive had those little weird little goal posts that when you ran past them, they flipped up from yellow to red. And that meant checkpoint. If you die, this is where you continue. But the Mega Drive version, I don't know if it was hardware concerns or they were just trying to utilise the assets they already had digitally and therefore didn't want to over tax the system. Have just a box that you jump on with an arrow and boom, there's your checkpoint system. On top of that, as I already mentioned, the Chaos Emerald system, completely different. Not just a number of Chaos Emeralds, but the actual uh, way you collected them. On the Mega Drive version, you were forced to go through that bonus stage by collecting at least 50 rings, I think, per level, and that giant ring would appear that you had to jump through. So again, that extra little thing you had to do to get to the bonus stage when you got in. There was lots of things you could collect there from live, from collecting all of the rings, all the way through to getting the Chaos Emerald itself. And the idea was you needed to get all of the Chaos Emeralds before the end of the game, defeat the last boss, before you could, you know, reach the conclusion. Um, whereas in the Master System version, Chaos Emeralds are collected mid-level. They do have bonus stages, as you just witnessed, but those bonus stages are really just for points racking and, of course, life, uh, collecting loads of lives. Uh, lastly, on the special stages, you can, um, you can only collect rings, one-ups and continues uh, on the Master System version, whereas on the Mega Drive version, you had a whole host of things you could collect, but primarily, it was that Chaos Emerald. Now, only three levels, three levels only from that Mega Drive version made it onto the Master System. Even though the Mega Drive version came first with the port, uh, or I should say the downgraded version um, for most regard to the Master System, only had three of those levels. That was Green Hill, the one we've seen, Labyrinth, the awful underwater level, and Scrap Brain Zone. Those are the only zones that exist on both systems, with the Master System having numerous completely different levels included. On top of that, when you reach the goal, um, the sign will spin like a, you know, a slap thing that jumps up in the air, the little signpost, and you can actually try and hit that to make it move in later games. Um, but in the Master System version, you get Eggman, which show, means you win nothing. If you get a ring symbol, that's one of the rarest, um, you get 10 rings added to your score, which could mean the difference between an extra life or not. And the Sonic symbol, where you get um, the extra, you get another life. And finally, an exclamation point, which is the special stage where you need 50 rings or more to enter, and that's on the Master System. On the Mega Drive version, that symbol rarely changed. And of course, to get to the special stage, as we already mentioned, run along, jump through that big ring. On top of that, like the 16-bit versions, one uh, like the 16-bit Mega Drive version there, the Master System version, if you collect 100 rings, you get a life. 
The main difference being, once you reach 100, the, the ring count number on the master system does not exceed 99. Once you get 99, if you collect more, one more ring, you go to 0, 0. You get the life, but now you've got 0 rings, which is a bit of a bummer. Whereas on the Mega Drive version, you could go higher than 100 and still get that life and still have the safety net of the rings if you get hit. Um, after taking damage, of course, this is another big difference between them. And I think a lot of this was to do with hardware and memory. In the Mega Drive version of Sonic the Hedgehog, if you're hit and you've got a bunch of rings, you lose them. They fall on the ground, they go everywhere, and whenever you can scrappily grab before you get hit again, those are the rings you get to keep and you can afford to take another hit. If you have no rings, you die if you're hit. Now, on the Master System, sorry, Master System, you collect all the rings, but if you're hit, you lose all the rings immediately, just whoosh, zero. On top of that, you can't recollect them, they're just gone. So it's actually a much harder interface, a much harder lifeline system of using the rings. Um, and one of the main reasons why the uh, Master System version was considered considerably harder than the Mega Drive, because of that ring system. Um, lastly, all the bosses must be defeated, I know I've already touched on this, but the bosses themselves on the Master System version you never have rings. We are talking the last boss to the first boss. All of them have to be contended with without taking a single hit. The Master System version, not only are you, do you get to collect rings, but don't forget, if you get hit, you drop the rings, you can collect the rings. Another one of the many reasons why the 16-bit version is considered um, easier. And the Master System version, the hardest of all. Even harder than the Game Gear, which is actually softened in places to make it easier still. But... Let's carry on looking at these games, shall we? Let's see what else we can do. Let's have a look. Gotta love that music. Carrying on with the bridge level. Let's see if we can get that jungle level to compare these two up, shall we? Let's get that jungle level up and running. There we go, and we've got the jungle. And likewise, we'll do the same for the Mega Drive because we wanna see how these two levels compare. Fast forward through that. We've got the spring zone. Oh no, of course it was the labyrinth level that was the same. So let's get that labyrinth level in while I've defeated that boss. Because how these two uh, games compare, in the areas they do compare, because we did of course, here we go, labyrinth. So here we have the two different versions of the labyrinth uh, level. Let's fast forward that Mega Drive one, shall we? Now we will actually mute one of these I think because so we can appreciate that music difference. So let's listen to the Mega Drive one first. Oh, the, oh no, this is the Master System version, even. Oh, and there of course is the oxygen system there. I always think the music has a nice 1950s twist to it. I quite like it. Kind of a detective thing, maybe even from the 20s. Whereas if we listen to the Mega Drive version, And they've gone for a kind of twinkly, twinkly version there, haven't they? Bing, 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 ba -dum, ba -dum, bum, bum. So again, it's a much slower pace. Have you noticed the speed difference as well, looking at these two characters moving at the same time? The Master System version, close to death there. It's up to you which you decide is better. I quite like the Master System music, I would go as far as to say. I think I prefer that one. The Master System music to me just has a little bit more energy to it. It's still a much harder game. Look at some of the jumps you have to make in the Master System version as well. They just seem a great deal harder to make in places. But, do you know what? Of these two games, I think it would be safe to say that the Mega Drive... Uh, actually, maybe one more level of music. Let's try that out. So next, let's look at whatever the next level is. Let's make sure it's not a fluke. Scrap Brain. Now, Scrap Brain, of course, once again, is a level that is supported on both systems. So, if we have a look at that on Scrap Brain, we'll run those side by side, and we'll have a look and see how they both compare. Have we got Scrap Brain level here? I believe we do. No, I believe that's Star something or other, Starlight. We want Scrap Brain, don't we? Let's carry on here. The difference between them... Alright then, let's move into Scrap Brain territory. So 
of first thing first, the music from the master system. Much faster pace, um, the level itself far more contained, the background similar but definitely le a lower depth of field there with, with the uh, background there, fewer layers, fewer colours as well. The scenery itself very very similar, deceptively similar but the master system obviously has to contend with a far more closed system because the level itself is very very small. Um, now if we look at the Mega Drive version, so let's turn that music down for the Master System, bring that down, and now we will look at the Mega Drive music and see how that fares. Now this is one that I think the Mega Drive might actually take the lead in terms of the rhythm of the music, because the music does seem to be a little bit better. It's a little, I don't know, there's almost an emotional component to it. There's that checkpoint thing we mentioned earlier on. Whereas the Master System version just seemed a little bit bleaker, which maybe you might think is more in keeping with the level that we're looking at here. We've already looked at in a previous video how all three of the last bosses in this game do compare, but I would go as far as to say that the music itself for the last level of Sonic, and by the way, look at the number of levels the Mega Drive player there um, has a, a, as a crew together, but the game itself, very similar, very similar indeed across these two systems, but I would go as far as to say that of course, the Mega Drive version is better, but it's the way in which they're better, uh, the way in which the Master System has strived to be as good as it can, which you've got to give it an honourable mention. It is a great looking game, it has achieved so much, and on top of that, if it wasn't for the Mega Drive version, the Master System version would probably be one of the greatest games that I've ever seen on that system, and I've played a lot of them, but otherwise, this has been Sonic the Hedgehog for the Master System and the Mega Drive compared. I hope you enjoyed this. If you've got any other games that you want to see different port conversions of and how they fare, do let me know. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time on Robbie's Arcade. Thanks for watching.